So I've moved my pressure tap over to the manifold side of the gas valve. And we're now reading the manifold pressure on the manometer. It's 4.10. And the pressure that it calls for is 4 inches of water column. So we're right on the money. It did take a little while to come up. It started out in three rains and slowly rose to four. That could be because the gas valve just takes a while to open, or it could be that it took a while for the pressure and the lines to, to kind of even out once it started. Anyway, it doesn't look like it's so bad to operate at this point since the heater itself is actually getting the right amount of gas that it needs. But I would still recommend having the meter upgraded just so that we put the numbers in line with the, the maximum and minimum requirements of the heater. It's compensating for the low pressure, but we might as well dial it in right to the manufacturer's specs, which of course optimum requirements. There's also the chance that, um, that when you run other things in the house, it will take gas away from the heater and this pressure will drop. Currently right now it's summertime, it's probably 90 degrees. I don't imagine the house is using much gas, but if the gas rains were on, the hot water heater, if they have gas heat in the house, looks like there's even fireplace here, so maybe even if they have a gas fireplace, you run all of those things, you don't have as much gas available to the heater, and then this number is going to drop below the minimum, and that's where we're going to be in trouble. So that's why we want to put these two numbers back in the, the proper range, the 7 to 14 inches of water column. And the only way to do that is to have the gas company come out. It's a free service they offer. They will upsize the meter. They'll put a 400 cubic feet per hour meter on, and that should make the heater run fine. We won't have any problems with soot building up in the heat exchanger due to improper air fuel mixture. So that's what I'm going to recommend to the customer with this heater. It's back together, it's running. We don't have the capability of showing smell on this uh, YouTube, but if we did, you would see that you don't have the strong acid like smell that you did when we first started. So there's the heater, it's the RP2100. We're going to put the covers back on and it's going to be running at full efficiency right now. I did say that I found um, some cobwebs in the orifices. It has seven orifices total. Three were completely clogged with cobwebs, a fourth was partially blocked. So in that condition, you were only getting about half the gas flow, so it would be equivalent of a 200,000 BTU heater, not a 400,000 like it is, so it was heating much slower. Plus, it was had more air in the combustion chamber than was required for that amount of gas. So the air-fuel mixer was off, it made the smell, and it was probably not even operating at 50% capacity. It's probably much less than that. So back together and back operational at this point. It takes about two hours to complete this process. It's a long process, a lot of things have to come out, but this is really the only way to do it if you want to get the, the spiderwebs completely out rather than just poke them back in the holes and have them clogged up again. Thanks a lot. This is Clint from Technical Tool Repair. You can visit my website at www.technicaltoolrepair.com for further information.